Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to have a look at refraction. So reflection in the last video is when the ray of light or whatever wave it's going to be is bounced back in the opposite direction. However, with refraction, it will carry on moving, but it will still change direction. And so when this is going to happen is when a wave is traveling through different substances. So different substances. Now, as an example, Let's say we had a glass block. This is meant to be a drawing of a glass block. Now, if we fire a ray of light at the glass block, let's say from here. So this might be produced by a ray box, but it's coming in and it's gonna hit the glass like that. So this is the ray. If you don't remember what we, what we mean by a ray, then please have a look at the previous video on reflection. Now, the ray of light is originally traveling through the air. So, obviously, when it's not in the glass box, this is the air. This, of course, is the glass. And then out the other side of the box, we have air again. Now, what we do is this here is known as the boundary. We call that the boundary. And that's because it is literally the boundary between two different substances. In this case, glass and air. It, we could be using any other substances, but glass and air is the one we're going to use at the moment. Now, what's going to happen when the light enters the glass is that it's going to slow down. So, some waves move faster in certain substances and slower in others. And that really does help to explain what's going on. Just like in reflection... We're going to draw an imaginary line, which is the normal. Okay, you probably remember that from previous. But the normal is just at a right angle to your boundary. Okay, so this is the glass and the normal is an imaginary line at a right angle. Now, if the ray is going to be moving slower, that means it wants to find the most direct route out of the other side of the box. So going diagonally is going to take longer. The most direct route is to go straight horizontally like that. Okay. And so what's going to happen is that the ray of light is going to become more horizontal. It's not going to exactly become horizontal, but it's going to become more horizontal. Let's say it might now travel this path. Okay. That's meant to be a straight line. Sorry about that. But you can see that this is at a steep angle. And this has leveled off. <clears throat> what happens at the end? Uh, we'll draw the normal in again. Every time you hit the boundary, you need to draw a normal. So this is our normal now. Like so. Okay. What's going to happen now is that from the glass to the air, in the air, it can travel faster again. <clears throat> so it can go at a steeper angle. So then it will go back off like so. And so this is the path of that ray of light. Now, what's important here is we have a look at two different angles. Again, very similar to in reflection, we have the angle to the normal. So the first angle is the angle of incidence, because this is the incident ray. And the second angle is also an angle to the normal, <clears throat> like that. So I should have drawn it a bit bigger, but that is the angle of refraction, okay? And what's important is that the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction, okay? When the ray is moving from the air to the glass, the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. Okay, when things can get a little confusing is if we look at this side, let's just make this normal a bit neater, like this. Okay, that's slightly better. Now, this is the incident ray, if we're having a look at uh, the ray coming back out of the glass box. So this will be the incident ray. So here is the angle of incidence. And this will be your angle of refraction because the ray has refracted again out of the glass. So each time the direction changes, so here it's moving steadily and then direction changes, that's refraction. Okay, now that ray is moving and then direction changes again, 
this is refraction. So every time you meet a boundary, you are going to get refraction. Now what's important is that when it comes out of the block, the angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction. That makes sense because this here is way bigger than this here. Whereas in the first incidence, this here, which is the angle of incidence, is greater than this here, which is the angle of refraction. Okay, now lastly, let's have a look at an example of what you might see if you shoot white light at a prism. Okay, so this here is known as a prism, a triangular prism. And white light actually contains all the colors of the rainbow, obviously all the colors of the spectrum. Now, all of these refract slightly differently. So what's happening is that, well, let's use green as an example here. Green light is a component of this white light and it's coming in and then it is being refracted. And then on the other side of the prism, it is uh, leaving again. Now let's say, for example, we're looking at red light because red light is actually of a different wavelength um, to green light, it's refracted slightly differently. So it'll come in and hit the same spot, but the angle of refraction will be different. And so the angle of refraction for the red light causes that to go over there. And so when you shoot white light at a prism, you actually get the colors of the rainbow all separated from each other. That is because the angle of refraction is different for each color. The angle of incidence here is the same for all the colors, but the angle of refraction is different based on the colors. Okay, and so that is why we can separate white light using a prism. Right, now I'm going to stop there. That was just a brief introduction, really. Um, but I hope that makes sense and you understand how refraction works. If you do have any questions on that, please do... Uh, send me an email using the link below or comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.